Hi guys, so I just realized the month is passing by. I gotta do, <laughs> finish up my Spellbinders uh, reviews of the die kits that I get, uh, that I personally pick up. Um, so this month I did get the small, large, APG, and card kit, and I already did the tutorial on the small kit. Uh, any links I have in the description box will be affiliate links, which means I'll make a small commission if you purchase items through those links. So we already worked with Frankie, and I'll just show you that card again, because he is so cute. Oh my gosh. Can you imagine putting this like on it? just anything? And then when I was making the little ornament um, uh, for my little guy, where'd I put him? I put him right here so I see him all the time. <laughs> my little uh, pocket mouse here. Uh, again, this is part of the Spellbinders sale. They're doing a buy one, get one free with the um, holiday items. Uh, some you know, select ones. I'll have the link in the description box there to take you right to that section. But um, he would be so cute also in felt. Why not? You know? Super adorable. But, um... I, it's just such a cute kit. So that's a small kit. And that did, you know, I, I went out all out on that one. So if you only want to do one Frankie, I mean, that'll obviously cut down on your time working on your cards. But if you want to do several or a couple or however, really cute. But today, um, I'm going to work on the large. So I usually go small, large, APG, then card kit. So the APG will be next, which I'm not sure if I'm going to make that the whole 3D thing. I might, or maybe just use it for like a card front. Um, we'll see what we do with that one. Um, not too sure yet. But this is today's... Um, um, tutorial will be on this, the Mary Stitching. And the way Spellbinders works is the whole month, if you sign up or if you subscribe, basically, um, that's the kit you're going to get. So, like, they'll ship it out after a few days. Uh, mine is set to ship out on the 1st or to charge on the 1st. <laughs> they usually ship within a couple days. So that's why I already had mine for a while now. But um, if you order today, next month they're going to also want to charge you today, like on that same date, for the next, uh, for that uh, month's kits so you get a nice long preview period like for me on the first I have to be really vigilant to watch the preview that opens up usually a day or two before the first and then I'll know if I want to keep or skip it which most of the time I keep them <laughs> but um you can skip it real easily I already have videos on that or even cancel just online you don't have to bother like you don't have to call and bother with like you know getting on the phone with somebody it's just right there you can just work it out online if you want to call them that's a different story but it's very easy to to work the um program and then you get 10% off the site all the time. So the price that you see on the site is basically already reflecting the 10% off. So um, really cool stuff. So uh, again, Mary Stitching. And so I was just curious about what I want to do because what's cute is that you can cut this out completely and make it like a little ornament. Or you can just cut it into your card, this inner part, and then stitch it. And stitch it however you like. I mean, there's different ways you can do that if you want to go like the whole thing or just a little bit or just this top part or, you know, depending on how you want to do this. So I'm going to select one of these. Um... Gosh, this isn't so pretty. I kind of want to do that, but do, do, do. let me think about which one I'm going to select and then we'll go for it. Okay, so what I'm thinking it might be a little bit unorthodox. <laughs> I want to use a black card base. It'll look really cute and white. Obviously, we've seen a lot of examples of that or any color card base, but I think I'm going to go with black. So this is um, really thick black matte. Uh, black cardstock from Crafters Companion. So um, it is not eight and a half inches wide because it's like standard A4. So I believe, let me make sure of that. Yeah, so it's only eight and a quarter inches wide. And people ask about this all the time about a standard A4 size card base. This is eight and a quarter inches wide by like 11 and 5 eighths inches. And that's why a standard A2, A4 size card is kind of funky because you're going to cut this in half and then you're going to you know, score it in the middle. So when you score it, the card is going to be uh, four and an eighth inches wide. And then the length is going to be half of 11 and five eighths. So it's kind of a funky number. It's basically five and a half plus another five and three quarters, five and seven eighths or something. I don't know. So it is kind of odd. A lot of people just cut it six to four and a quarter, but that's not really true, a, a four size. But anyway, or four by six, not, again, not really true to that size, but you know, almost. Okay, so um, to get a, a standard A2 size card out of this paper, I just always come in here and I'm gonna cut it at five and a half inches wide. Cause we need that five and a half inch depth there. And then on the other direction, you're gonna cut it at eight and a half, right? So that you can score it at four and a quarter. So this other direction eight and a half and again we're kind of eyeballing this so it'll probably end up being a little bit wonky when we get there okay and i'm using this paper on purpose because it's thick 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 so when i go to manipulate it a lot because we're going to be working with it quite a bit right with the stitching it's just nice and thick so i would say use the thickest paper you got 
I don't know, it drives me nuts on this scoring board. The inch side has the thing, but it pops out on the other side, so you have to push it through. Why can't it be on the inch side? But I know why. All right, <laughs> four and a quarter. All right. I may, like I said, have to do a couple tutorials on this because I really do want to use one of the other ones as an ornament. I think that'd be really cute. So the instructions here are saying to go ahead and just cut down. So obviously these things would fit through the marquee, these smaller ones. This other one, um, since this is exactly four and a quarter wide, it should fit in here, you know, so I suppose we could try it. <laughs> Let's see. Um, yeah, so they're just saying to put this right on your card just to die cut both edges of the card. So this is super thick stuff. We will see what happens. Um, oh, okay. Oh, that's cute. So if you look on the back, it does end, you know, so I'm going to look at the front, but I'm also going to check out the back here just to make sure. Yeah, we're all the way to the edge. Not too crazy. Okay, there's that. I can see that this card is a little bit crooked, so sorry, I'm going to bring it down here. And for whatever reason, I keep forgetting to bring out tape. So I'm going to use this. This is some cheap tape I found at the Dollar Tree, and it's been working really well for me, so I guess we can keep using it. Okay, I'm going to try to put this as straight as I can. And I'm running it right on the edge, so I'm not losing too much card. Okay. And you know what, I'm going to have to probably just wrap this around. <laughs> just to get it out of the way. And again, when I'm clearing that area, I want to run this through. I got the thing put together real tight there. Yep. Yeah. Looks like we're good. On this side, let me run this one side back again. Again, it's super thick, this top corner. Um, I can tell when I went to run it through that my card was over just a little bit. So let's just move it over one more time. Oh, and yes, thank you guys have given me lots of uh, ideas of how to get rid of the squeak, squeak, squeak on the other side there. <laughs> I appreciate it. Yeah, there we go. I could tell because it was a little bit crooked when I ran through. I probably would have cut just fine the first time, but there's that. I'm going to get rid of all these little <laughs> bits, and I'll be right back because they're going to be kind of a pain to get off. Okay. okay. So having done that, here is the rub. I'm not going to be able to put this back through the marquee because um, I have to open up the card. Unless you want to stitch this through both sides. Oh, you know what would be another curiosity I've never done is if you did it this way, but who knows... I'm not willing to do that right now, but I will let you guys know if you leave this on the back and run it through. I don't know. Do you think it would tear it? I will leave you an answer down here if it works out or not. Okay, because I don't want to do it right now with this project because I just want to get the video done. But that might be something we can look into. I don't know. But we're going to put this on here. And it looks like you put it right on the base. I don't see why you would move it at all. Yeah, it's just right on there. I'm going to leave myself a little bit of a lip, just in case, because we do want a little edge to sew into, right? And I'm just eyeballing that. Okay, I'm going to tape that down, and I'm going to run this through my uh, Gemini or Empress or whatever other larger machine. Um, and opened up, right, because we only want the, the uh, die cut on this side. I'll grab I always say check before you really remove the thing that it's all punched. That looks pretty darn good, but let me make sure. I need something sharper. Because these are really small holes, so I just want to make sure. Okay, that looks all good. Uh, how about in here? It looks a little bit suspicious. You know, it's funny. I guess if you really want to, you don't have to even punch the holes until you're actually working with it. Because you're going to go in there with a needle anyway. But I just want to make sure that this cut well. See right there, that middle section seems a little suspicious. So I'm going to do it again. Just run it through one more time and maybe with a little bit of a paper shim in that area just to give it a little more pressure. It looked like it was all done, but that very center piece, I was like, hmm, 
I don't know. Okay, let's do it again. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like more of a struggle than the first time. It just kind of went through. No worries. Now it's like... Uh... Yeah, we're good to go. I was just, this is this middle section right here when I was looking at it, it looked kind of funky. And I think we're, yeah, look at that. Just popping out. Okay, I'm gonna remove this and just um, gently pop out all the little holes. And I will be right back. Look at that. Oh my gosh. Gorgeous. Okay, it's only because the kids woke up and came downstairs, I had a little time to play. And I did run this back through just like this <laughs> with the die on the inside and the rest of my card on the outside. And I ran it through and you can see, I mean, it looks good. I thought maybe there's some kind of grease or some kind of oil or something that might mess it up. It looks pretty good. I mean, it's up to you. Um, but I just ran it through once. Let's see what this looks like. Yeah, I mean, my holes are cut. Oh, how pretty is that design on the blue? Look at that. So pretty just already by itself. That's what I'm saying. You don't even have to stitch this. It just looks gorgeous already. But, um, yeah, so my other thought was, okay, well, what if I ran it through with the metal shim in between, right? Duh. That sounds like a good idea, right? You have this on here. Put the metal shim in between your card so that the die only presses into the metal shim. It is a very tight fit. I got to, like, here, and I was like, you know what? I'm scared because it was like, yeah. I was like, no, no, no. So I took that out, and then I just did it this way, and it worked out really well. So maybe we've discovered something new. Maybe if you want to take a chance, because, I, I mean, it just, it went through really nicely. I mean, do you see that? It doesn't look gouged or anything crazy, right? So, hey, maybe, maybe that's something we can keep doing from now on. All right, let's okay, continue on. So, um, let's put this to the side. You know, I had that little extra card, and I was like, you know what, I'll just make it into a card. So, really quickly, I'm just going to glue this stuff down. And I just grabbed these things from the, um, from the kit, the card making kit. So, I'm just going to... that there. That was kind of cute. So this card base is actually a little bit small because it was a standard A4 size paper and I just cut it in half at five and a half and left it alone. So um, it's a little skinnier than a normal A2 size card that was just cut on the side there. So that's why it looks a little bit different. And then I'm going to pop some dimensional on the back of that just to finish it up. And again, these things I grabbed from the card kit from this month. You know what? I'm going to put the glue here because this has little holes and I'm not exactly sure where all this is going to be so I'm just going to put that there. Cute. And then one last thing, I mean this is just very simple, you can put like dots, drops, you know, cute little faux pearls or whatever kind of embellishment you would like. Really cute. So, just a quick card. I'll put that to the side. So for this guy, um, I went and I was looking through my stash, I have a lot of embroidery thread because I love making friendship bracelets and all that. Um, and I was looking for a silver one, but I couldn't find it. So I'll try to use it for whenever I do the um, little ornament shape. But I have this one, like this is fancy stuff right here. I remember picking it up. It's not cheap. And then I never used it because I'm afraid to use it. But this is more um, for like embroidery, like hand embroidery, not with this kind of stuff. Um, what's, I don't know, a cross stitch where you add a little gold, a little something pretty. So that's why this is very fine. So this one's super, super fine. I think it will still look cute, but they're very fine threads. Okay. This is like a really thin thread, but I think just your regular friendship bracelet stuff is good. Pick up one that's shiny. This is just cheap stuff from like, um, I think I probably got it at Hobby Lobby or something. That big old pack that they sell, right? So Iris, those brands, they always have some really nice stuff. Um, Anchor. Uh, but you want to make sure it's like shiny, you know, some of them are, look more matte. I think the ones Crafters Companion carries are very matte looking. They're more like cotton than this shininess that they have going on. But, you know, I think the shine is prettier. That's all I'm saying. So I think I'm going to start with the white. And this is up to you. How long of thread do you like to work with, right? So if we're going to do each little section, then you don't need that much thread, right? Do, 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 do. If you want to continue going, I don't even know if you're going to be able to do that, to be honest. But, um, you know, you might. But I, th I so I'm just gonna cut a, as long a thread as I'm comfortable working with, and I like to work with a really long thread so I don't have to switch out very often. And then we need some needles. Now, this stuff is thicker. This is friendship uh, bracelet kind of thread. What's called um, embroidery thread again. 
So it does have a thicker body. You can separate it if you want, but I don't want to do that. So I have this little inexpensive set of needles. I always keep it right next to me because I always need it here and there. Not always, but you never know when you need it. So I always have a set here. I have like little travel kits and all that. But what's nice about this set, um, just the sword and needles, is that some of them are for like embroidery, so they're thicker, the, the eye is bigger. And then, you know, it could be a little more rounded instead of being like a sharp, but use whatever it is that you like that works for you. So I'm gonna get like, maybe this one. Just cause it has a larger opening. It's still pretty sharp. If you wanna use an embroidery, like uh, the kind that's kind of more rounded. It's okay, up to you. guys, I'm sorry for the rough cut edit here. I was off to the races, going to start doing it, and I thought, um, I saw something in the corner of my eye. It does say that they want you to use two strands of floss, which I mentioned earlier, I don't really, I want to keep it like this because it looks nicer, <laughs> you know, when it's a nice thick thing. But what you're going to do is take two strands. So if you ever look at this thread, there are six little strands that are all rolled up together. So you're going to pull two apart. And then I'm going to start over because I was already doing it. And then I was like, this is getting really thick. Um, duh, it says to use two. So yeah, you do. It, it's very thick stuff. So I'm going to go through. And this is the part where you're kind of like keeping it separate. You see how I'm doing? And I'm trying to keep it apart over here. But I'm still pulling it to separate here. But if you just go for it and pull it, it's going to get into a jumbled mess. So try to keep these ends apart as you're splitting these over here. So I am sorry about that. Just start over and see as you get to the end, it starts getting kind of crazy. So just try to keep it. Okay. So then later we'll split those two into two. Oh, those four into two, sorry. Okay, let's start over. <laughs> so now I'm a pro because I was already halfway through that first one before I was like, this is getting too thick. So we're pulling two of them together to through. I always just leave like a little bit. I'm not doubling it over, okay guys? We're not gonna double it over and make it four. We're just putting that together. On the other end, I'll go ahead and tie this off. Just to make a little knot. All right, and this give you a guide here on how to start and where you're gonna start. So I'm gonna point that out very clearly, hopefully. And then we'll go from there. So, if you look at this, Hope you can see there's dots that go this way and then this one, right? This diamond. So this is another pattern on its own. You can mess around with the pattern as much as you want if you like to include that together or only do that back one or however. But we're going to start in this middle dot right here. Okay. So there's that little motif. Right under it, there's a dot. So we're starting there. And I kind of blew it out earlier because, <laughs> again, it was stacking up so high. Okay. So I'm going to turn this over. I already have a piece of tape there, a little piece of tape to help us hold it down. So I'm going to pick this up and just hold down our end. Okay. Now we're probably going to back this at the end so you can cover the backing of it. So don't get too worried about how that looks. And then we're just going to go through every single one of these little dots. So I just want you to see what that looks like. It's not. So if you're looking at this diamond shape, that top dot belongs to that design, okay? So we're looking at this one right here, right where it starts curving. That's number two. So this is number one, this is number two. We're gonna go down in there. Okay, and then we're gonna go up through number one again, through the back, down to the next one. Kinda keeping it taut a little bit. I'm not pulling it super tight, but just tight enough so that, you know, it's nice and taut. So that my finger in the back is kind of holding it. This is just in case you're not you're new to stitching. Down at number three, what they consider number three. Nice and taut, back up to number one. And you're gonna continue going in that same way until you get to number 13. So this is number four. Back up, this looks so pretty already. Much better with two strands. I was like, this is getting really full. I'm gonna end up ripping that little hole where it was coming out of number one. Okay, there we go. Looks a lot more delicate. Okay, so I'm gonna keep doing that. And then back up at number one. And I'm kind of holding it with my thumb, you see, just to keep it nice and tight. And then down in through whatever number that is at this point. And I'll come back once I get to number 13. Look how nice that looks already. Okay, this is so pretty. So that's number 12. So I just wanted to show you, I'm gonna come back at number one. Okay, 
And 13 is this next one right here. Now, you are also going to use 13 as number two for the next fan. So again, we're going to keep going because I still have lots of string. I wouldn't do one and tape it off, do another one, tape it off, do it. Just keep going as much as you can. So now I'm going to bring this up to number one of the next shell, right? The next little fan, which is right here, right under that little motif. And number 13 that we came out of last is actually going to be our number two. So now I'm going to go back down through that same one. Okay. And then again, back up into number one. down to number what is essentially number three now oh. <clears throat> up through number one back down to number four so I'm gonna go sit at my couch <laughs> and finish this up sorry I got something in my throat so I'm gonna go sit on my couch finish this up and if I come to the end if it makes sense to tie a knot tie them together like if it's going to be stuck in the back, I will do that because it's easier to do that than put more tape. But if I just run out of thread, what I'm going to do is just um, get a little piece of tape, tape it to the back, start the new one again, tape down with a, with a knot and continue going. OK, so I'm just going to keep going. OK, guys, I'm at the very end. Um, it took me about two and a half times of my string, right, because I still have some left here and I'm going to bring that back here, get a little piece of tape to help us out here. I need to go find my tape, guys. <laughs> All right. And with this one, I think, well, you know what? I'm just going to tape it wherever because we're going to cover this with a backing anyway, so I'm just going to tape it to itself here. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and cut a length of the blue string that I wanted to use next, the embroidery thread. I'm going to separate it out so I have a, a two-strand piece, and I will be right back. Okay, I would say doing this took me about 15 minutes, because the holes are nice and big, you know. So on this next one, we're going to start off a little bit different. Obviously, we have a corner piece that we got to deal with here, so it's a little bit different, but they're showing you how to do the full piece here, sorry. Um, so start with number one in the middle, go up to two, down three, down four, down and go clockwise. But you know, you can do it however you like. I am going to start at the edge though, because we do need to know how to make that one. Same thing, you, know, you start in the middle, you go up and then back through the back and the next one, next one, next one, keep going all the way around. So this thing is the same one, same thing. So I'm going to start in the center being my number one. And let me tape that down. You can tape or you can hold it. You know what I'm saying? A lot of times when you're doing embroidery work, you basically just hold it with your finger until, until it's safe enough to let it go. But for now, I'm just going to put a little piece of tape here. Push that down. Okay. So again, so that was number one. We're going to go. And they said to go clockwise. You want to go clockwise? Do whatever you like, but you got to fill them all up. So there's number two. Obviously in an orderly fashion. What I'm trying to say is if you want to go counterclockwise, go ahead, but do it, you know, one, then the next one, the next one. I'm going to go back through number one into what they consider number three and keep going. Same thing. And when I'm done with this section, I'm going to, um, oh, and when you get a little knot like that, just be patient with it. Like right now, what I have to do is just pull this back up and give it a little tug so it undoes. It's not a real knot because a real knot would obviously take work. It's just a little, just kind of loops over itself. So that happens usually at the beginning when you have a lot of thread. Um, okay, so we just pull down there. And I'm gonna keep going around and I'll come back when I need to go back to number uh, one, okay, over here. Okay, so I just finished that uh, piece. So unfortunately with this one, you're gonna have to cut off pretty much every time you uh, do a section because if you were here and you want to just cross over to number one, you're going to see the string here and there, you know what I'm saying? Like in the back. So it's better just to cut it off. I will tape this down in just a little bit and then just uh, start the next one. And then again, we're just going to start the same way. Um, I'm going to put a little knot here. Again, you don't have to put a knot if you want to just um, stick it down with tape to begin with. But let me get this going. Make sure it's not all... Okay. And we're going to start in that middle with number one 
And again, they want you to go clockwise. So we're just gonna go clockwise to number two. Again, tape it in the back if you like. Right now I'm just kind of holding it with my finger. Sorry, I don't know if I was out of frame, but I was pulling it through. Um, there we go. And then again, back up through number one. And just keep going. The same we did you know, earlier, clockwise. Nope. <laughs> Let me get this going. There we go. And just bring it through. And so I'm gonna go sit at my couch again and just do all of this blue section. And then, you know, like I said, tape off each little section. Um, and then back through one. Basically all the way around. Till we get here, right? All the way around, all the way around till we get here. And then I'm gonna cut it off in the back, start a new one, start a new one and just keep going. Okay guys, so that was a little trial and error, but I got it. This part did take a little bit longer. This, like I said, was about 15 minutes worth of work maybe. Um, this one I was more careful because I wanted to make sure that the little center looked nice and cute. So I was very careful about going through there. But um, just at the last one here. And up through there, down through here. And another thing I do kind of now, especially because there's so many strings or not strings, but like this area, when I come back through here, I just kind of embed it back in here to tie it off. Because again, we're, I'm gonna put like a, a backing, so it's not really gonna just slip out, but you can do that and then put another little knot, but I've just been slipping it out and boop. But you wanna be careful because you don't want to slide out obviously. So I'm gonna trim this first piece down just so it's not sticking out everywhere. This one too. And I'll just clean up the little strands that are in the back, but look how pretty. Oh my gosh. Okay, so what I wanted to do um, to cover this, and it is pretty neat looking. I mean, if you really look at that, that's not bad. So I, I don't know if you know the old like wives, not tail, but like basically the rule of thumb is that the back of your embroidery should be nice and clean as the front, which mine never has been, but this isn't bad guys. I mean, that doesn't look bad at all. But I'm still gonna cover it, okay? So <laughs> just in case yours looks a little a little messier, you know, you wanna get that covered up. So what I'm gonna do is cut out a piece of, think of silver, metallic silver paper, and I'm just gonna cut it down to um, five and a half, so just as long, by uh, maybe four, and then I'm gonna trim the side off, use that same edge die, I'm gonna run it through, and I'll be right back with that, okay? okay? And that came through real easily. And I've been pulling those off, but you can always just trim it down whenever you have the little pieces on the edge. Um, so we have this little guy. Oh my goodness. And I was thinking about offsetting it just to make it look prettier. So you can even see that silver there. And I think that's a good idea. Look at that. So that's why I'm gonna stick that down. And so how I'm gonna do this, I am going to use this guy. So this is definitely a labor of love. And if you like doing this kind of thing, then it's right up your alley. Um, I haven't done stitching in a while, but it was really nice because it was just repetitive, just sat there. Just kind of went around and around and around. So really, really nice. I am using a wet glue. And what I'm gonna do for this part is I'm gonna put the glue on here, on the very edge. Trying to catch some of that um, just in here. Remember how I just tied it off and I said, well, to finish it off, I would put a little glue. So just keep it nice and neat as you can. That piece there, there's a little piece sticking out that I need to get rid of right here. And that should be good. Okay. And again, I'm just gonna, well, I guess I'll lay it down just so I can see better what I'm doing. And I'm offsetting it. Okay, I'm gonna hold that down until it holds up, it's like stays nice and, uh, sturdy here. Okay guys, I just put a bunch of heavy things on top of it just to keep it down. So that's basically the base of the tutorial. They use the cute little letters that um, we got not too far, long ago. If you were uh, a member or a subscriber, you might have these same little letters and they use the word Mary uh, and then Christmas there with the foiling. I think I'll just grab some stuff from the uh, card kit, just kind of like what I did here and just create my own little kind of topper, maybe some paper cut down to size on this area here. And, um, and that'll be my card. So thanks for watching guys. It reminds me of um, Indian jewelry, like Native American jewelry, so pretty. So again, I'll probably trim down some paper and put it here, do something, a little something there, but hopefully I give you guys some idea of how to use it and I will see you guys at the next one. Bye now.